This is Leviticus 27 and 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. And if any man will at all redeem out of his tithes, he shall add thereto the fifth part thereof. And concerning the tithe of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. He shall not search whether it be good or bad, neither shall he change it. And if he change it at all, then both it and the change thereof shall be holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the children of Israel in Mount Sinai. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations to the occupant there pushing this word in truth and sincerity. I just want to go over a quick little lesson over tithes just to give you brothers and sisters an understanding of what tithes mean today as opposed to what they meant in the Old Testament. Now, the verse we went over was Leviticus 27, 30 through 34. And it's basically letting us know that the tithes that was being given unto the Levitical priesthood was a law and commandment by the Most High to be done to sustain the Levitical priesthood in their service to the uh, tabernacle and to also to uh, keep the storehouse of the Most High field. So let's just go to Numbers 18, which, which uh, you know, lets us know about this. Uh, this is Numbers 18 and 20. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they service, serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. So the children of Levi, as you see, did not have an inheritance along with the children of Israel because the Lord was their inheritance. And so therefore the Lord, you know, commanded the children of Israel to give a tenth of their yield of seed, cattle, herd, uh, fruit, whatever it may be to the Levitical priesthood for their service inside of the tabernacle. And, uh, and that's, that's basically what the tithing was for. That was a tenth of their yield and increase to be given unto them to sustain them for their duty inside of the tabernacle. Let's, uh, let's go to the next scripture. Deuteronomy, we'll start at the, I think it's Deuteronomy 14. We'll start at the 28th verse. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thine increase the same year and shall lay it up within thy gates. And the Levite, because he hath no part nor inheritance with thee, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow, which are within thy gates, shall come and shall eat and be satisfied, that the Lord thy power may bless thee in all the work of thine hand which thou doest. So this scripture right here is a precept to the scripture utilized by Israelite leadership today um, to separate you from your money, basically. And the precept to this is Malachi 3 and 8. So Malachi 3 and 8. Will a man rob the Most High? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, it's the tabernacle, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall he Shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. So basically, this is speaking of what we just read in Deuteronomy 14, 28 through 29. If they were to do this, that blessing would have came upon them. But obviously from Malachi, we see that they were not doing that ordinance that the Most High prescribed that they should do. So when the elders and so-called apostles come up with this scripture to justify getting your tenth, we got to really look at this, man, because this is speaking only of the sustaining of the house, of the storehouse of the Most High and the, uh, of keeping the storehouse filled 
and the sustaining of the Levitical priesthood. The sustaining of the Levitical priesthood because they didn't have an inheritance with the other tribes. They didn't have land like the other tribes did. And then also with this, you know, this law and commandment, you know, the Levitical priesthood were the custodians of the tabernacle. But there was a change in that with the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. So that priesthood left from Levi and moved over unto Judah. So with that change in that, there had to be some sort of change in the law. So we're going to be, we're going to jump into that right now. Let's go to Hebrews chapter seven. And we'll start around the fifth verse. And verily, they that are the sons of Levi who received the office of priesthood have a commandment to take tithes of the people according to the law. That is of their brethren, though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So this was a commandment, you know, according to Leviticus 27, 30 through 34. Now, what we want to do is skip on down. And this was a commandment about tithing. I want to skip on down to Hebrews 7 and 12. For the priesthood being changed with the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Speaking of the law of tithing. So this tithing has been null and void now. Because what? It was part of this carnal commandment. That was the carnal commandment of tithing to sustain the Levitical priesthood and to keep the storehouse of Yahweh field. Now, in 70 AD, you know, the temple was destroyed. So what servitude do the Levitical priesthood have in a destroyed temple, man? There is no servitude inside the temple, man. And we don't even know to this day who or the true Levitical priesthood, man, you know? So this thing is null and void, man. And these guys are utilizing these scriptures to for their own financial gain, man. And they're, and they're, and they're praying on your hard earned dollars, man. So we're basically, I'm basically, you know, doing this lesson to open you brothers and sisters eyes to, to this tithing piece, to let you know that this thing is no longer valid in this day and time. Now, there's nothing wrong with giving donations. Now, when you go into the scriptures, you know, scripture speaks of alms and, you know, and the, the most high looks upon those alms, you know, as a good thing. So you can give donations if your heart is so inclined to give donations to certain uh, individuals who are relaying words of truth to you. That's not a problem with that. But this thing of tithing, when you hear these so-called elders and, and apostles come up talking about you need to give your tithing or that 10%, the antennas need to go up and you need to really consider, you know, you know, what they're trying to do to you. Are they being deceptive, you know, or are they being true with you? So now let's just go into some examples because if anyone would know anything about tithing, you know, our brother Paul would, would be the man, should, should know about that. So let's just go into a few scriptures you know, uh, concerning our brother Paul. Um, let's see. Let's try uh, Second Thessalonians, um, the third chapter. Second Thessalonians three and one. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. And that's the purpose of these lessons, to edify and build you, brothers and sisters, so that you can be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith. And we see that today. Let's skip on down to uh, verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that ye would draw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. This is a commandment. If that brother is walking disorderly, man, you need to, you know, you need to withdraw yourself from him and not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we have, be we 
for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day. Meaning that Paul was out there on the highways and the byways teaching and preaching the truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. And after that, that brother got on his grind to make his own money. Now look at that. That we might not be chargeable to any of you, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensemble unto you to follow us. Ensemble meaning example. So Paul's basically showing us the example that the elders and so-called apostles should follow. This is the so-called example that these so-called, this is the example that these so-called apostles should follow. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So man, if you ain't on your job, on your grind, man, hey, you shouldn't eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Yahweh Shai, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing, and if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him, warn him as a brother. This is the perfect example of how an apostle, an elder, should be operating, man. Paul is giving us a blueprint. Now, we look at this blueprint and then we have to look at those guys who are calling themselves elders and apostle in this day and time. And we need to see if they following that blueprint, man. And if they're not following that blueprint, the antennas need to be going up. Let's get another scripture here. Let's go to first Peter's. Um, uh, let's see. Now let's. Now let's go to uh let's go to second Corinthians. Let's go to second Corinthians. Let's try two second Corinthians, second chapter seventeen verse. Second Corinthians two and seventeen. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of the most high, but as of sincerity, but as of the most high, in the sight of the most high speak we in Mashiach. Now when we read this scripture here, what we want to do is focus in on this word corrupt, corrupt. So we go into that word corrupt is G2585. Corrupt. And what we want to look at to try to get base gain by teaching divine truths. This is what Paul was not doing. This is what we see today. And we have to ask ourselves a question. Are, are those guys who are out on the highways and byways doing this to get base gain by teaching? Is that the reason why they out there week in and week out for base gain? So now let's go back to that scripture and we're going to put this base gain back into the scripture we're going to use this inside the scripture for we are not as many which by base gain corrupt the word of the most high but as of sincerity but as of the most high in the sight of the most high speak we in mashiach so paul is letting you know straight up man i'm not doing this for money I'm doing this for the edification of the body of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And that's what all brothers should be doing. This for the edification of the body of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, not for base gain or filthy lucre. Let's, let's move on. First Peter's uh, chapter 5. This will be our final scripture. 
The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Mashiach, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of the Most High. This is what the elders should be doing, feeding the flock which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre. Man, let's look that word up, man. Filthy lucre, G147. Eagerness for base gain. Eagerness to get out on the highways and byways for base gain. Come on, man. Come on. Man, this is clear and cut. This is clear and cut, man. You know, this is this these scriptures speak volumes, man. And, you know, I, I just wanted to do this lesson, you know, you know, to edify you brothers and sisters, you know, on this tithe piece. Now, you know, like I said before, you know, it's no problem with giving alms. You can give alms and donations if your heart is so inclined to give. But when individuals come up to you talking about these tights, giving a tenth of your of your, your hard-earned cash, man, those antennas need to go up. And, you know, I hope this was edifying. And as always, I like to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Peace and salutations to the Akimat that pushing his word in truth and sincerity. And as all and until the next time, Shalom.